Are you ready for a job that gets you more? UPS is hiring now. As a warehouse worker, you'll earn up to $21 per hour, and you might even be eligible for a program that helps you with thousands of dollars for college, in many cases tuition free. Search and apply now at upsjobsky.com. Card Nation, this is attorney Alex White with SueDistractedDriver.com. Our law firm is a team of dedicated attorneys ready to fight for you. If you get injured because of someone else's negligence, their insurance company already has a legal team, and now so do you. If you or a friend or loved one are injured, find your attorney at SueDistractedDriver.com. This is an advertisement. Welcome back. Welcome back to Middays with Marcus Maben. What a perfect, uh, what a perfect rejoin by Nikki V, man. That, oh, that's a God. If that doesn't explain where I think we all are at the moment, <laughs> it's brutal. Uh, let me remind you of a couple things. Uh, week one may be over, but the season's just getting started at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, to kick off week two, which we did kick off week two. Which anytime the Giants piss down their leg, which is a lot, um, I enjoy it. So I mean, I do have love for all the New York teams, but knowing that Mitch and Andy were meh, oh man, kind of t- it washes a little bit of it. Away. I know. It, the only reason I couldn't fully enjoy it is because it brought back the second worst night of my Louisville sports life was when Willie Gay jumped off sides. So that was terrible. Uh, but. To kick, uh, to, go, to kick off week two, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new customers a can't-miss offer. Bet just $1 in any football game this week and receive $200 in free bets instantly no matter what. That's right, DraftKings Sportsbook giving all new customers $200 in free bets instantly when they bet at least $1 on any football game. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code WLCL. To, to, uh, to receive $200 in free bets when you place $1 bet on any football game. Promo code WLCL to get your $200 in free bets instantly this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. It must be 21 or older. Indiana only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And if you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Uh, also, real quick. Pizza gonna... day! It is! <laughs> Pizza day, and then we're gonna get to these phone lines. Baranos Pizza. Thanks to George and the Baranos team for dropping off lunch to the ESPN Louisville studios. Thanks to thanks for lunch or dinner, or thinking of lunch or dinner. Baranos has you covered tonight and this weekend. All Baranos is now delivering alcohol, carry out and delivery to your home. Support local. Yeah, it's that good. Baranos Pizza. Shout out Pizza Day. day. <laughs> Shout out Phil Baker and George. Won't be walking around. The, <laughs> I wish you still had the video. With the pizza that, in his hand. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, all right, let's get to the phone lines real quick. Uh, Joel, welcome in on the game day, man. What's going on? What's up, Steve? I, I wanted to get in the, before Marcus left, man. Yeah. Him happy birthday. He man. knew. He yeah. knew. Yeah, yeah. Tell him, uh, tell him I, I told him that. And, Absolutely. Uh, He's listening. boy, man. Known him a long time. But uh, either way, man. You know who's not downloading their tickets tonight? Your boy Noah Peterson or whatever the heck the kid's name was. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fair enough. But, Fair enough. Um, you know, my thing is, I was just going to ask you a few things. One was, you know, tonight, what do you think is going to be the, the the big deflating moment possibly in the game? Like, to me, I think you're going to know about this game within the first two drives of each team. I mean, that's kind of my opinion. I feel like if UCF gets the ball first, comes down, pops a touchdown in right off the bat, I mean, any type of energy in the stadium probably is going to, well, maybe not fully go because they're going to see what Louisville does. But if Louisville comes out and tries to answer and it's the same you know, stuff we've seen now for the last year and a half or whatever, what do you think that's going to do to the stadium? I guess to me, how many people you think are going to be there at the beginning of the game? And if that happens, what I just said are going to leave at like halftime. And what is the Mark Ennis post game show going to be like 
if they take an L tonight. Just a few questions. I don't think they win. I mean, I keep going back and forth all day or all week. You know, I've been calling in, and it's a big night at my household. Of course, my wife's always already been texting me all day. We're going to watch the game. Where's it going to be at? So I'm already getting the UCF stuff, and it's going to be terrible. If Scott Satterfield has one W he can do for the fans, please, please pull off this win tonight some way, somehow, man. But hopefully they can do it. I'm I'm not very optimistic, but if not, come midnight tonight, me and you will be tweeting back and forth about Braun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, listen. Weekend. Appreciate it, Joel. Appreciate the call. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, in theory, yes. If if what he says happens, happens. I think people would. That would be. It won't take long. I, I don't think. But I don't want to. I don't really want to do like, I mean, it's game day. I really don't want to do like, okay, let's think of the moment where people are going to start, but you know, like, okay, we know it's combustible tonight. We right. know that we, I'm we, trying to get some motivation. Uh, yeah. A bit. Like, like everyone, like, let's go, is already, man. and look, I get it. I get it. But yeah. You know, I'm putting my fan hat on now. Like I get it, but I mean, you're acting like the game's already lost and I got news for you. If you keep the attitude up, it freaking might be. I but know. I mean, I mean, UCF came to play. They brought the fan base. They got a pretty solid offense, a decent defense. Yeah, they're ranked better than than Louisville in just about every regard. But they're playing at home. They're yeah. playing for. I know. They're playing for their season right now. I mean, go yeah. in with a little bit of swagger. Make a freaking game of it. I know. For God's sake, people. I know, and it just kind of is like that's why I say. I mean, I know. I know. In the back of all our minds, we're like, if you come out. And you look like crap. Yes, we're all going to be extremely pissed and maybe ready to to move on. But it's like, man, let's at least go into the game with something. Like, come on, you know. And I think, and I think a lot of people are there. I, th- I do think a lot of people. Uh, we'll go ahead and get Kenny real quick. Kenny, what's going on, man? Hey, Steve, the OVW champ. Hey, appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I always got to represent, man. How are you? You know, down the mic and uh. All that good stuff. No doubt. I'm, I'm, a fella, I'm a wrestler guy, too. I go way back with you. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Five. Yeah, yeah, I can go way back with you, dude. I love uh, it. Number five, man. Uh, happy birthday, man. Enjoy, bro. Ball sure. out, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, this yeah. Um, what else I got to talk about? I'm going to keep it sweet, dude. I'm at work, man. But uh, just yeah. enjoy oh, your weekend, man. And uh, Tell uh, L1C4, shout out to all the Louisville fans and the fake Louisville fans, too, that want to be <laughs> us. And... Um, Doctors of Dunk, Surgeons of Slam. Have a great weekend, guys. See yeah, you. hey, appreciate that, Kenny, man. Appreciate the call. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and I, I like that. I like that vibe. But there is a uh, – I agree, though, man. And, and I know I keep going back to that. Because, I mean, tonight is a winnable game. Like, I mean, it's not – again, uh, but I think that's what – that's what drove us so nuts about Ole Miss is I think we all watched Ole Miss and we were like, you know, this could be a winnable game, you know. So tonight I think you feel the same way. I mean, you're only I think it's down to like seven, seven and a half or something. I mean, so it's definitely one you can win, but it's odd because you don't just need to win tonight. You need to win and sell us on the rest of the year. You need to sell us on yourself and win. And it's like, and I hate even saying that, but I mean, it's like, that's kind of where we're at. It's like, I I need more than just like, I need something here. You know, I mean, I think, I think a win, regardless of what it looks like, will, will excite people. Uh, But, but we need a win and to be sold that, Hey, moving forward, we got a little something here. Well, I mean, like uh, I think Pat 40 said it on, um, uh, on, on the take. And I thought it was good. It was a perfect verb. Like he was like the Craig Thorpe era, they were wheezing out wins, wheezing, like yeah, yeah, wheezing yeah. out wins yeah, over yeah. Murray State. Look, they didn't cover, but they would have had not for a little mental error there against EKU. I we've we've broken down the things that that were a little alarming that yeah. they were scoring, but they were relying on Malik Cunningham scrambling again. Yeah, the offensive line came out flat again, mm-hmm. and it led to a turnover early. There were a lot of things that you could nitpick. Uh, I don't even say nitpick, but like things that were fair. Yeah, that weren't exactly, you know, uh, things that you could hang your hat on. But at the end of the day, they rallied a little bit in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Even if they were going, even look, even if they were relying on Malik's legs, it still got the job done. Sure. I feel like, come on, you win. This is a good opponent. UCF yeah, is yeah. a good opponent. You win against them. I'm not saying it's enough to 
silence everybody or for everyone to buy into a good season. But at least right now, you're on pace to get six wins. Yeah, I think the only thing that would really silence people for the year is A, a blowout, or B, a quarterback change and a win. I think those two things would make people go, okay, all right, let's go. I, I just I feel like if they can – a quarterback change maybe, but I feel like if they can go back to their bread and butter – like Biscuit did a great job breaking this down mm-hmm. yesterday on the V mm-hmm. Show about how their bread and butter was, w- 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 you know, is, is the run game and opening that up. And yeah. Satterfield even said that we haven't had that, you know, that big chunk opening the game up like running play. I feel like if they kind of can show at least, hey, we're going back to like teams, teams early especially. Um, it's frustrating when they lack an act. You don't yeah, know. You I don't know who that. they are. And right now they can't go back to the basics. What has made them successful in the past, and that is really frustrating. So I feel like if they can at least establish that, yeah. I mean, Trevion Cooley, uh, you know, snaps off some big runs. I, I mean, you know, J, you know, uh, Jalen Mitchell pounds it in, becomes a Mr. Yards. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like if they can at least get that, and Malik yeah. isn't scrambling, and that if they can eke out a win. With that, at least you can build on that. At least you can say that, hey, we went back to the formula. I the do formula think you, that worked. I do think you need to hit some shots down the field, though. Yeah. No. Just because I think you need to, you need to, this marriage, if it's going to work, it's like, wait a minute, I married you. Actually, this was kind of like a shotgun wedding, but I went ahead and married you and stayed with you. And now you're nothing what I thought you was. In the first year, the sex was good. Let's be honest. Right, right, I mean, right. I stopped tiptoeing around it. It was like, whoa, I didn't I know. know you could do that thing. I know. And now you stop doing that thing. I know. And everyone's pissed off. So and it's go like, back, at least do that thing. We like to throw it around. We like this as an offense. So we're going to, listen, we're going to to be okay with winning. But my God, if you're going to win in a way that we're not really a fan of, like, you got to do it, man. And that's why I say I think it's such a weird spot we're in because it's not one of those deals where we're like, okay, we love what he's doing. Like, okay, Bobby's offense, for instance. Say Bobby beats Florida State in that game. Now, I think there were some other issues going on too. But say Bobby beats Florida State in that one game, and then they they go on and they're they're winning and Juwan's throwing decent, you know, and they win six, seven, six games. And we go to a bowl, seven games, and and whatever, and win a decent bowl game to get your seventh win. Fans would have been like – now I'm saying take all the extra out of it. I was just say, I was just like, in, just let's just act like it was a normal season. I do think that Florida State is that that yeah. It's a parallel in the sense that look, I'm not I'm not saying the season's going to be great. If it's one of those things, yeah, uh, I'm not. I can't promise you the season will be great. They'll get six wins. Yeah, just like you're, you were saying that. I I don't think Bob, you know, necessarily that could have happened, but it can't happen if it yeah. does, if they don't get the win. But but here's my here was my thing about it though. We liked Bobby's style. So we would go, okay, I can live with this. With Satterfield, it's like between South Carolina, between the style you try to play, between all this, it's like we're not really a good couple. Like we got put together on a reality TV show, and we're not really a good couple. So like you're going to have to like – we're going to have to really work at this, man. So it's like – that's why I say I think Louisville fans tonight are kind of – and I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I feel like the way fans are tonight is like, hey, listen, we want to win, but we also want to be sold on you. And right now we're just not. And I think it's doubly frustrating because while – okay, it might not have been the most – why do I keep going to the analogy? No, it's fair enough. Toe curling stuff, but at least it worked the first yeah. year, and it, and, it, and it exceeded expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, not only are they not progressing, they're mm-hmm. not do, they're not airing it out more. Yeah. Marshawn Ford has been really quiet, and everyone huh? was, uh, you know, kind but, of. And he's been open. Him, and he has exactly. It seems like there's been opportunities there to utilize it to evolve. Yeah. But not only are they not evolving, they've actually regressed. Mm-hmm. In the you know that ground game mm-hmm. that they were really successful with the first season, yeah, and they, and they so it's sort of like they're not moving up. If anything, uh, like I, that's what, I feel like Biscuit made a very good point in saying that if they can at least get back 
to what worked the first season. Yeah. Then you can have a little bit of confidence, like, okay, we can evolve off of this. Yeah. But, that, I mean, it's been pretty stagnant, and, and you're relying on Malik to scramble. And we, uh, what's the definition of insanity? We're doing we the same know thing, yeah. eventually that does yeah. not work. Yeah. And it's going to get the kid hurt. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, let's get Bullet Central Jason in here, man. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Steve? How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How about you? Uh, I mean, I'm working, man, but I can't complain. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I'll, all right. Uh, I want to go ahead and just, you know, start off what I was going to say and saying, you know, happy birthday, Marcus. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been listening to y'all for over two years now. And, oh, wow. Thanks, you know, man. I yeah. mean, in my personal opinion, this is appointment radio. But, I appreciate uh, that. Thank any, you so much. Uh, but anyways, you know, uh, enough brown knows them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, I just want to say this, man. I hate to play devil's advocate because, I mean, I'm as much as uh, on the Jeff Brom train as you are. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, dude, honestly, do you think we'd be passing the ball more if we could have, if we had a quarterback that could actually complete a pass down the field? Yeah. I mean, I feel like every time Malik Cunningham throws it downfield, it's an interception or it's a bad miss. And it's like, I mean, I'm sorry, but it feels like it's been that way since last year when he when he made that like miraculous throw to Des Fitzpatrick in the first game of the season last year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, shoot, if if I'm being honest with you, I feel like that was more Des than it was Malik. And I mean, like, and I do like Malik, but I mean, my God, there. I mean, if he was on Madden, there would be wide receivers with a higher throw power than he does. Yeah, like he just he just he's not a quarterback in my opinion. He's not. I mean. Give, I mean, I don't know, give Evan Conley a real shot or give Brock Doman a real shot or mm -hmm. shoot Tyler Jensen. I don't care. If we have a quarterback and throw it down the field, I honestly do think that our offense would work better. And I feel like, you know, I mean, maybe Scott only has a running option right now, and that's why our offense is so boring. But, you know, I'll get off here, and uh, yeah. I mean, I wish I could make it out to the game tonight and, you know, go cards. Yeah, pre appreciate the call, man. I, I agree with him, and, and I think even that, though, we're we're holding that against the staff a little bit or against him because it's like I agree with what he's saying. I think if we had a guy that could get it down the field more, I think Satterfield would get it down the field more. I really do. But the problem is, is it's like that still goes back to Satterfield and goes back to – why do we not have a guy that can't get it down the field? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like why in three years do we not have a guy that can get, like, you're telling me that Evan, I mean, and, and I don't think Evan can, I think, uh, but I've said, I've been consistent with that all along. I think Evan was named the backup because he is like, Hey, if Malik goes down in the third quarter and we need Evan to come in and finish the game, I think if Malik was ever benched, I think it'd be Brock Doman would probably get the shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like to to take it, but it's like Evan's man. a great setup man. To yeah, make, yeah, to and, make and he's a like... finisher. Like, yeah, I, I know the offense really well. I can come in, I can finish a game when I have a lead. You know, like I I can do, I can win you the game. You know, a so Kyle Bowen maybe in there, like maybe you know under pressure. If, if Evan Conley was a fraction of the quarterback Kyle Bowen was, Nick. I, just, I mean, well, I mean, he hasn't had that. I would UK. chop. He my, hasn't had that UK. I would yet, chop but. my pinky off right now to have Kyle Bolin for two years on this football team. Kyle Bolin would start over either one of any of these quarterbacks. I, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. It dog wouldn't anybody, be close, and it wouldn't be close. I do. He yeah. would be the guy right now. Uh, somebody says happy birthday, number five. Uh, he's still listening, I'm sure. So. Uh, Malik is good when his O line is good and he has time to throw. Okay, I mean, fair enough. Uh, let's see, just looking at a couple things. Uh, somebody said they transferred. I do agree with that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, even a guy like T Webb, somebody that could have maybe thrown it, you know, and it's like, man, you just you're telling me there's not one single option. Behind Malik Cunningham. Well, that's what I mean. Everyone's a little worried about. I mean, yeah. ideally, you bring in a quarterback who uh, I don't remember who said this, but admit, I mean, it's true. I, I think you might have said it every, every other year. <laughs> you should have you should have a quarterback in your recruiting class. I love the confidence. How did you point at me with a pill bottle in your hand? Because <laughs> the only way I God, can, don't the, tell us what it is. The <laughs> only way I can get through this uh, is with with you know pills. I'm like, this is where we're at as a fan base. Nick's shaking his finger at me with a pill bottle in his hand. It, I mean, I want. <laughs> Like, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't mind saying it, like, okay. <laughs> but it's kind of fitting. It's my antidepressants. <laughs> I'm just rattling just, around. Just, hey, 
Leave me three. Yeah, I was gonna say, just, I, I can cut them up for you. We can just, do just in case, just in case for later. What are they doing? They're, they're doing but, lines of Zola. I know. Yeah, That's what are they I'm doing? Taking, yeah, yes. This is where we're at. I got three minutes. Okay. Three minutes of motivation. Okay. I found this. Okay. Absolute motivation. Let's do it, and then let's do it, and let's go to uh, let's go to break, and then we'll come back and we'll finish the show off. I like it. I like it, and I I'll leave your mic on if you want to chime okay. in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm listening. All right. Cool. Here we go. From absolute motivation, silence the doubters. Hmm. You know, Winston Churchill said, said many years ago, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. He might have been drunk when he said Fair enough. A heartbreak, a breakup, parents getting a divorce, a fight, getting bullied. All of these things then make you because of those experiences. Now, when that happens, you are going to do one of three things. You, you know the whole flight, freeze, or fight? Now, you know what? Freeze happens, nothing happens. Flight, nothing's happened. But fight, that part is born during those moments. What if I get asked a question that I don't have the answer to? One of the scariest things about life is a question. The, the, the scary question can shake a soul up because no one's asked that question for you. If you don't ask the questions of what you want to do next, the world is going to put you in the box on what you have to do next. And you are rising up to their expectations because you're not asking the questions yourself. life do you want to live and why do you want to live this life why is it important to you why is it what you're putting through all these hours why would you want to do that that's transition when you go through it and then the pressure part when you said here's what i'm going to be where you declare your intentions to the world this is what i'm going to be doing a lot of times we keep things to secret i think declaring intention serves a purpose i think when you go out there and you say this is what i'm going to be doing this is where I'm going to be at. You officially have the world holding you accountable. That pressure could be good pressure to put into your life. The identity goes from being a regular person to the next day, no one recognizes them. Haters highlight your weaknesses. And if you're smart, you're like, he makes a good point. Hey, one day I'm going to make so much money, I'm going to shut everybody up. That doesn't work. First of all, that's not going to take place. So you have a choice. Either you can say, I don't want to deal with the voice, live a small life. But if you can't live a small life and you have to live a big life, you have to understand that it's going to be pushed. And you have to figure out a way to silence everybody. Anticipation is game. The more you tell the world how to manage expectations dealing with you and what to anticipate, you actually minimize a lot of the noise. We don't take the time to say, what are the values and principles that I'm willing to build my life on? And what really are they? What, what, are, what are you willing to really stand up for? You know, what is your core belief system? You got to go really deep. Really deep with purpose and really deep with if you don't move, what could take place? For people to sit there and realize, if you really want to move yourself, ask the questions. Go deeper on what life could happen, both good and bad. Happen to both of them, and hopefully that creates urgency for you to start taking the next necessary s steps. The gift of imagination and visualization is rarely used properly. You want to ask those questions on the other side? I like that. All right. I like I that. Kind of put, you kind of put everything a little listen, bit in perspective. I like, like that. We need. Listen, we all need... I listen to Eric Thomas. E.T. Yeah. Thank God it's Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't usually agree with him on that point, but I, know. I love his stuff. Listen, I the only thing I disagree with E.T. on is he's like the sleep stuff. When he's like, I, I don't sleep. I'm like, well, okay, Eric, but I feel you. Okay, but like, yes, I need sleep. So. I like how he kind of changed that. He's like, well, I'm saying sleep, but just. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, but I love him. So stuff like that, yeah, juices me up. So everybody listen. I, here's the homework. Listen to something motivational on the way to the stadium tonight. And download your tickets. And download your tickets. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, Middays with Mark Smaven on 93.9 The Ville.
Welcome back. Welcome back to Middays with Marcus Maven. Oh, Brian Danielson there? I can get down with that. I can get down with that. Hey, we will have to close the show with uh, everybody's working for the weekend. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Yeah, on yes, Fridays. Yeah. Maybe we'll start doing that. Brian played it coming back from the last break, but maybe it's what we'll do is we'll start closing out the Friday show. I like that. I like with that. that. People did. People did. Uh, really enjoy that. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, something else I was going to tell. Oh, tonight, tonight we have the um, a lot of coverage. I think Mark and Mark. Sorry, I, just, I just took a bit of a bite of pizza and then before I, I I finished it, but then I love LAs, love them. Yes, but when you drink them, they do kind of make you burp. Like they're oh yeah, because it comes out of that glass bottle and you yeah. kind of inhale the the uh si- that the, the citrus, citrus yeah yeah. Flavor, baby. So since 1926, which, which is phenomenal. Like I, they're literally one of my favorite drinks in the world. Oh so. yeah, but you, you'll get the, the yeah. So like the if you burpees. take a big drink of it, you're like oh. <laughs> so. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, but tonight, uh, I believe I think. Innocent, of course, the drive would be on three to six two, but um, or not uh, uh, the um, yeah, I got the, the promo the, sheet, the, right ta- here. the take. But Ennis and Blankenbaker will be on from the alley, I believe, from three to six. Then Mark uh, and Mark action, baby. yeah, the Miller Lite pregame show with Pat Jaggers and Taylor Lynch will be uh, live from Caboose Number Five, uh-huh. uh huh, which so, is going to be awesome. Yeah, just correct me. I don't, have, I'm, I'm not reading it, so just correct me no, if I'm going wrong. Going off the dome, I like. Yeah, it. yeah. So that's going to be great. And then right after, directly following the game, we'll have Mark Ennis with the Miller Lite postgame show. It'll be your first place to hear from Scott Satterfield, from players. Uh, we'll have all that. Um, and by the way, Nikki, some people are saying we're on national radio. I don't oh know. crap. If it's the stream or what you've done, I, I have no idea. Have you screwed Next. us all? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I Welcome don't. back. Okay. Thank you, Texter. Sorry. That was all Nick. A hundred percent. Yeah. So we're back. Uh, but I was just telling you we're going to have all that coverage tonight. So basically, you could turn your radio on 93.9 The Ville at 3 o'clock right after the V show and never have to change it. Like I said, eh, you're allowed to listen to Jack and them too. You, you, you can, that's fair. That's fair. But uh, you can do that and uh, and we'll have coverage all the way through there. So, all right, Texters say we're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. Appreciate that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take this. Uh, Terry, thank you for holding so long. Uh, appreciate it. Welcome in. What's going on? Yes. Hi, <clears throat> Steve. Uh, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing just fine. Um, sorry I missed Marcus. It was very nice to celebrate him with his champagne bottle last night. <laughs> uh, so when you see him, just tell him another thing and say, hey, and happy birthday. Absolutely. Absolutely we'll do that. Now, to you. Yes, ma'am. I know I'm a bronze family friend, too. Let me ask you a question, though. Yes. If you was getting ready for an important game tonight, you as a coach, mm-hmm. and you had this radio station where the fans and everybody in tune to get rid of him, right. how would you feel about preparing for tonight's game, Yeah, knowing that it's very important to you and your family and your income and your team players? Yes, ma'am. How would you feel about them bashing you, but then – Turn around and say you support them, but then, I mean, I'm just curious as a person. How would you feel about that, and how would you approach that to prepare yourself mentally and physically before a game? Because I saw his last interview he did. When he first came here, he was smiling, joking, laughing. He doesn't have that no more. And that's why we wanted Patino to come out because of the way he did before he when he was here mm-hmm. and we beat Florida or won the what was that Orange Bowl or whatever. Yep, yep. Anyway, okay, and then he left for the NFL, right? Yes. Because we knew what he could do. He ended up being a disappointment, but that's okay, you know, because they illegally fired Tom Jarrett. Now, when it comes to the AD. Uh, you know, Tom was a football guy. I'm not for sure, and I'm still not hooked on this Vince. And after him not supporting Chris, I'm still out in the left field with him. If you want to criticize and get rid of people, 
Maybe you need to start talking about ADs. I understand about the coach, but give this coach a chance. This AD was here before Tom left, and he had no problems wanting to step in Tom plates, and he has not done half of what Tom did. And I think it's disgraceful. They don't even have a street or nothing name at the time because Tom and the fans built that U of L. I know from me being a teenager, and I went up there on campus for a lot of parties. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. And then on the second thing is, I really like your show. Well, we appreciate that so much, Terry. Thank yeah, you so much, and we appreciate the call. And I listen, and, and I, I appreciate the perspective too. I mean, and and I understand what she's saying. I do understand what she's saying. I also understand though that that comes with the job. Yeah, and the product's not good. The sports talk radio is not always going to be good. That, what I mean by it is the 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 fans, you know, the reaction. So I would say personally. And I agree with, I mean, look, I love Tom Jurich. I, I do think Vince supported Coach Mack through this. I, I will say that. Uh, I don't think suspension came from him. We can talk about that another day. But uh, here's the thing. Um, and I love Tom Jurich. Like I said, everybody knows that. I'm, I haven't hid that very. <laughs> he, look, he loved me and I loved him. We, hey. shared, we shared an embrace at an Indianapolis hotel. Nice. Yeah. And, um, and, it, listen, I was, but to be fair, I was in the good graces of him. He liked me. Okay. I liked he was, him. He was always very nice to me. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Little handshake. That, that's my thing. So, like, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I've always tried to stay away from, like, I don't know. Some people have had, I know your dad for, was one that had a different, um, not that he didn't like him, but had some moments with him. See, I never got, to, I never seen that side. I may have by now. Who knows? Right. Because I start losing. I may have been like, oh, this sucks. And then he might have called me and been like, you're an idiot. Okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to criticize other people's experiences with it. But I mean, he, look, he's got a great legacy here. I mean, you can't. He does. I, mean, I think I, everybody I feel, said it. Your dad said that for the most part. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, and he look, had he some. Got, a, got the university in the yeah. SEC. That is, yeah. that's the, I think. That's the, the legacy right there. I feel yeah, like yeah. that's like a mic drop. You don't mm-hmm, have to, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to do the stage sure. expansions. You don't have to get the Yum Center and all that stuff. Sure. But all that is equally impressive. But that, yeah. that's that's the mic drop. That, that, okay. Now. Another thing. Yes. And I feel like it was like right before I think Plato died, the yeah. great philosopher, yeah, yeah. he basically said all philosophy is BS. Like follow okay. your own thing. And so all the other philosophers were like, hey, great. Thanks, Plato. Like, good looking out. Yeah. So that video I played basically said, don't listen to us. I mean, yeah. truly. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. if you're going to be successful, I feel like, look, and I know, and it's appreciated, appreciated a lot of, you know, Ross McDane's, you know, a lot of a lot yeah. of people connected to the university do tune in. And we, we you know, cl- I feel like I could speak for everyone here. We yeah. appreciate that. No, Thank absolutely. You. But. A lot on the football staff, too, and we know. Yeah. You know, so, but like, I I'm feel- not saying that without the not thinking, like. They're not knowing what I'm saying, you know. Right. If you watch, yeah. if if you did the, if you, I don't know if you watched it, the Mannings, yeah, the Mannings broadcast yep. for uh, Thursday. Or, uh, well, football, I, I, Thursday yeah, night I flipped football. through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it real, it made me Monday realize, night football. Uh, Monday night football. Thank you. It made me realize how little I actually knew about. Football. Oh, I know. So, <laughs> isn't that so, the truth, man? So I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that they're listening. And go, wow, uh, that kid that played club hockey really broke down our offense well. Well, and he's and Sats playing that to his, to his team. My God, um, no. But I do think another thing in there, and if you go to some of the more pro markets, the people that care most about the team. Are most frustrated when when they don't perform. Drew so, says that all the time. I would rather anger like than apathy. I mean, I'm not quoting him, but like, and that's what scares me about tonight, man. That's what scares me over the next couple of weeks. Right now, I don't mean to cut you off. Like, no, please no, don't no, lose no, that no, point. No, but no, right no. now, there's anger. That means they're still with him. Right. Yeah. There's I, nothing worse than right. A, a, ba- a bad, bad performance tonight Absolutely. will turn into. We don't care. Let's just get to basketball. Like, yeah, the like, Stephen A. game. We yeah, don't yeah. Care. We don't I care. don't care. I might take my kid. You know, I'm going to be able to get a ticket for 20 bucks. I might take my kid out to a game. I, but I don't care. And that's where it's going to get scary. Like, that's where you start to say, okay, now there's got to be a change made. And to her point, and I think to the point you were making, the only thing is, though, is it's like, that's part of the job, though, man. Like, you yeah. know what I would do if I heard that? I, I would try to get my team hyper-motivated. 
Yeah. I'd be like, eh, I'm about to get fired. This is 93.9 The Ville, the fan station. Yeah. They are saying this about you. Yeah. Shut them up. Yeah. Yeah. Go out there. Go out there and shut them up tonight. The thing in that motivational clip also said that, like, I know it's, I'm certainly not saying anyone on this station sure. being haters. But said some haters or people who are critical will point out flaws. It actually could be useful. No, I think the last week we have, even us, have been not, I wouldn't say haters, but uh, critical. Very critical. Yeah. But but I don't I don't think it's been ridiculous. Oh no, no, like, it's been fair criticism. I, I think. Yeah. Like for I mean, people who know a lot more about the game. Yeah, you played it. Yeah, my high school didn't have a team. Yeah, I told I was gonna I would have been a pretty good tight end back in the day. Yeah, um, to this day. Yeah, d- decent hands. How you doing? <laughs> don't skip like that. What can I say? No. Um. <laughs> thank you. I, I'm going to ride that compliment for about a week. Yeah. And a half. Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. yeah. Uh, bounce a quarter off of it. All right. Uh, there you go. Uh, but people who know a lot more about the game, you, uh, Ennis. Uh, I mean, biscuit. Biscuit. Yeah. I, I mean, you, like uh, he knows. Uh, you know. I mean, Marcus. Marcus been around the game of football his whole life. Yeah. So shoot, he's, he's got yeah. a son in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I feel like the criticism, they're fair. Yeah. I feel like the assessments are fair, and I do think that even a lay someone who speaks broken football like me, a layman, could tell you, "Well, that didn't work." Like this is frustrating. But to watch. but after tonight with a bad performance, I don't think it'll be fair anymore. I think it will turn into apathy and hate and hate. Well, and and, hate, and, and listen, whatever. No, yeah. Then Steve Rummage turns into look. I want Brom. I want Brom. There's nothing fair. I'm saying it's Brom because me personally, like you may say another name, but you get what I'm saying. Like I don't think it'd be fair after Mike today. Mike Norvell. Yeah, uh, no. I, it was the first coach I. Could yeah, think. literally no, the no. first coach I could think of. Yeah, no. no. Steve Sarkeesian, Chip Kelly. I'm just gonna keep naming football coaches I can think of. I get down with Chip Kelly, but like Steve yeah. Spurry. Yeah, right, right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense though? No, I think I, it's not fair anymore after tonight with a bad performance. Because I'm gonna say, look, I'm just done. I'm done. Like, you know, like, I, nope. But, Steve, they're improving. I don't care. You know, they're improving here. I don't care. Like, I, I'm done, you know, and that that's what that will turn. And that's just me being brutally fan in me, honest. Like, that's how I'll be. Um, but with that being said, and we're about to – we'll be closing here in just a second. Closing. I feel like I'm preaching. Uh, I'm going to close here in just a second. Um, so, I did the <sighs> – I did the whole, you didn't listen yesterday. I did the whole thing on why I wanted Brom yesterday. Um, I'm not doing that again today. Um, let, let me finish with this. It is game day. It is noon, almost noon. The parking lot's open at 2.30. The alley opens at 3.30. 5 o'clock is card march. You know, like, we're a few hours away from having a 7.30 game. Let's not, let's not forget that. A 7.30 game on ESPN where they're going to be able to show the game. They're going to be able to pan over to Churchill Downs where the basketball team's going to have a court set up. You know what I'm saying? I believe that's going to be part of the uh, Visually, it's going to be. Well, yeah. And and I mean, I know from talking to some people at uh, uh, UofL. Yeah, and that's fine, Texter. You you didn't have to listen every day. I appreciate you listening, though. No, you do. Uh, There's a quiz at the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'll, listen. If they lose tonight, I'm sure I will go back over that next week. Uh, But (laughs) here's. In detail. Yeah, in detail. Meticulous. With added. (laughs) Added. But here's the thing the university worked hard to get that done so they could get that visual. Like, tonight, the university is going to be on display. And that's a big deal. Whether you like Satterfield, whether you don't, whether you're rooting for him to win, lose, whatever. It's a huge deal with what we're going to be on. So let's let's pull our pants up. Let's let's tie our shoes, you know, or whatever. So you got enemies at the gates. Yes. UCF came into play. I know. Like, let's get out there. Let's figure it out. Take lunch. Take whatever it needs. Let's clean the chi. Hey, and you know what? Tonight, I do believe we will be unified as a fan base. We might be pissed and unified and booing. We might be cheering and happy and high-fiving. But we will be united as a fan base tonight. And tomorrow, we'll be united at Louisville Live. So let's get this thing together. Let's let's lock arms tonight. Let's be card nation. And let's get this thing going. So I'm excited to get out there tonight. Nikki, you can get ready and play us out if you want. Um... And it's uh, it's a big weekend. It's a big weekend 
for uh, for the university, for the fans, for for everything. So let's get out there tonight. Let's enjoy what they've done. Let's enjoy what this administration. Uh, you've got big visits. Texter, right? Caleb Glenn's on an official visit. You got big visits. You've got, uh, I mean, I mean, you've got McCain from California is on a visit. Uh, you've oh, nice. got, oh, it's loaded. No, this weekend is loaded for Chris Mack, man. So like, there's there's a ton of stuff going on. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good productive weekend, and I'm excited. All right, play us out, Nikki. Nick, enjoy your weekend, dude. You too, my friend. I know you're going across the hall. I am going across. You're going the hall. across the hall, I'm so you scurry still got... over there. Okay. All Jeff right. Walls joining the V Show at 1:30. By the way, Jeff I mean, Walls at 1:30. They're part of the Louisville Live as well. Absolutely. So, yes. Is Pops on today? Pops is on today. Heck yeah, man! Perfect show. Pops. Uh, Mike Pratt going to be on today? Yeah, hour one. Hour one. We'll, we'll have a little. It'll be. It'll be purple. A little, I like Mike. I like Mike. And then we're working. He's working. one of the few Kentucky guys. Yeah. Right? No, the Lumine. We're working. Ah, oh, damn it. I just, all right. I was trying to get Jason Benetti, but I just, I literally just got shot down. You just got, just shot, got down. shot down. But he'll have a great call. But it's still going to be a great show. We're going to be tuning in. Nick, I appreciate you. I love you, dude. You're the best producer in the world. Aww. We got you on this show. I don't know how we talked them into letting us have you, but we got you, and I'm excited. Have a good weekend, y'all. Middays with Marcus Maven on 93 Now the Ville. Are you ready for a job that gets you more? UPS is hiring now. As a warehouse worker, you'll earn up to $21 per hour, and you might even be eligible for a program that helps you with thousands of dollars for college, in many cases, tuition free. Search and apply now at upsjobsky.com. Cardination, this is attorney Alex White with SueDistractedDriver.com. Our law firm is a team of dedicated attorneys ready to fight for you. If you get injured because of someone else's negligence, their insurance company already has a legal team, and now so do you. If you or a friend or loved one are injured, find your attorney at SueDistractedDriver.com. This is an advertisement.